This video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. Good morning. I'm here in Cornwall. This is what Cornwall looks like. This is what a car park in Cornwall looks like here in the foot of England. Yesterday we all piled into a minibus and drove 300 miles uh, into the deep crevices of the night to get here the night before to film a sketch. Long story short, Surfshark VPN have given me a big old chunk of money to make a sketch. So I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm absolutely spending all of it. Uh, this is a video originally called The Robot, uh, but I'm renaming it to The Imposter. Got to get those Among Us clicks. Um, <laughs> it's a better name for the video, to be fair. And it's a sketch that we originally part wrote for when we were going to be filming with Sir Killalot. Uh, but then the, the idea was rejected outright because, and I quote, Sir Killalot doesn't talk, and if he did, he wouldn't say those things. Um, <laughs> we've come all this way to Cornwall because there's, there's a robot here and we're going to meet him and I wanted to show you the behind the scenes of the sketch and also the life trying to carry on making YouTube sketches during lockdown because this is the first proper sketch I'll have filmed really this year I mean we shot Let Me In but that was at a doorstep with a crew of two this is going to be a, a more of a real thing and I want to bring you on this, this journey, this challenge with me so... <sighs> Let's do it. Location one. So we are currently filming in an open corner shop. They are open for business, so customers are around. And I'll be honest, I will admit freely, I've kind of forgotten how to act. I haven't been performing in front of a camera really at all this year. There was just let me in and that was very dry. And <laughs> I'm not a good actor and I think it's gotten worse. So, uh... Oh my God, it's an alien invasion. <laughs> that was very bad. This is very technical. <laughs> so technical. So they do it in, in Hollywood. <laughs> Make sure that everyone's wearing a mask. When yeah, of in. course. Well, I mean, when they're when they're. Uh... Obviously, just if, it, if they're if on indoors. camera, it's fine. Just yeah. It. So obviously we all had to wear masks whenever we were sharing an indoor space and regularly wash and sanitize our hands and equipment. The only person who wasn't wearing a mask as much was Reese, my co-star, and that is because he had a negative COVID test just a day or two before the shoot. But the rest of us played it as safe as we possibly could. And honestly, not fun spending 16 hours in a minibus with a mask on when you have a beard. It's very itchy and warm. I'd recommend shaving your beard if you're gonna wear a mask that long. Not good. Not a good time. There's a story here. Yes. Sir. I don't want to know it. If I could grow a stupid beard, I also have 6.7 million followers. Okay, that's just unnecessary. Anyway, look at this lovely spaceship model. Looks a lot like your arm. Oh no. No, I just I just don't like it. I'm scared. Wait, wait, wait. I actually <laughs> Prisoner, you will tell me the location for the human resistance. No, I'm not Okay, we're gonna come down on the camera. I'm not too. Oh dear. Ladies and gentlemen. This will prove how good a memory I've got. <laughs> So you're probably wondering, Tom, where did you get an eight and a half foot robot? And the answer is very simple. I was Googling big old robots in my personal time and found Titan the robot. Dropped him a line, said, hey bro, wanna collab? And he said, no nah, thanks man, not my thing. But I do have a baby brother called Brutus that the world has yet to meet. You can collab with him instead. And I said, okay. You will tell me the location of the human resistance. I've got your resistance right here. <laughs> what have you done? What have you done, you piece of shit? <laughs> okay. I'm gonna fuck you up. Wow. Higgins, what's an Astro movie and why don't I have one? And now a word from our sponsor. 
I don't like piracy. Maybe it's just a do unto others kind of thing because I also work in media, but I always try to watch things legally and pay when I can. I want to support the stuff that I like. But if I want to watch something like Animaniacs or Infinity Train or Palm Springs, I literally cannot do that in the UK. I can't stream it. I can't even buy it. And it's potentially going to get a lot worse now that studios are opting for home streaming releases thanks to cinemas being closed. So my only options are to either steal these things, which I don't want to do, or use a virtual private network network to make it appear that I'm using the internet in America where it's available. Is it fair that I have to do this? No, it's annoying as hell and region specific content is stupid, but either way I'll be using Surfshark VPN to virtually change my location to watch these things that I can't get here, and you can too, if you want, if you don't already have a VPN subscription or maybe yours is about to run out. If you click the link in the description and use code DARKSQUIDGE when signing up you can get 84% off and an extra 4 months for free. And it also does the other stuff that a VPN does, you know, hide your IP address and encrypt your online data, but we know this. Anyway, back to the video. Do you think I could make it as a YouTuber? You want my honest answer? That depends. Do you want me to tear out your insides and blast them into the endless void? Yeah, I think you'd be pretty good. Thank you for your honesty. Okay. Beep boop. Oh, I'd be lying if I said this shoot was going on schedule. That's enough about you, worthless windbag. Tell them about my show. Ask politely, Brutus. Yes, yes, tell them about my show, please, worthless windbag. No. So these two are in their own show, it's called Lonely Robots in Space, they just released their first episode, it's... You know, it's pretty good. It's a transcendent triumph of wit, like Shakespeare with robots, or Transformers with a story. Sure, man. If you like that sort of thing, I guess. Mm, can I crush him yet? We didn't really turn the camera off, Brutus. So while shooting this video, I think I've come to accept something. And that is that I'm not a very good director. Um, and this isn't me fishing for compliments. This is something that I've, I've been thinking about for years and years. I've never really considered myself an artist. Um, I, I always view my approach to creating things as more scientific, economical. I, I'm, I'm, I'm shooting and I'm directing for efficiency. You know, this is one of the reasons why you pretty much never see close-ups. In my sketches, characters will very unnaturally lift things up uh, to their head height, um, and, and this is, you know, one, I think it's kind of funnier and, and, and more obscure, um, but also it means you don't have to film a sort of semi-condescending close-up, and it's just one less thing you have to deal with, because now it's just in that one shot. Um, and this approach works for a lot of the sketches I do. Um, you know, I, I'll look at Let Me In again as, as an example where it's like, you know, that shot is just a shot. Reverse shot um, with very little diversity that works in that way. My style works in that way, but when it comes to things that require a bit more heart, um, I, think I, I think I fall flat pretty hard. You know, like, we had this amazing space to film this sketch in and this incredible giant robot man. And I didn't utilize it well enough. It, it it could have been so much more. And my regular structure of just getting coverage, you know, shooting shot, reverse shot, you know, mid shots, just getting all the lines really didn't do it justice. And it, it's making me think that maybe going forward, I should relinquish uh, th that directorial control more often. I should give it to people who will do a better job than me. I, I think I'm a good producer. I think that when it comes to assembling the team and making the product at the end of the day the best it can be, I'm very good at that. And that's what I'm doing with this video now is I am saving it in the edit. I, I'm bringing in the right people and paying them the right amount to do the things that are going to make it work. But I'm saving it from myself, from my ineptitude as a director. I think that there is a degree of arrogance confidence, vision required to be a director and over the past few years that has completely left me as 
a, a creative. I just... I don't even second guess myself anymore. I pre-guess. I never even get to that first guess. I'm kind of crippled with doubt and yeah, I think this video was made that very clear to me. So don't be surprised if in some of my newer videos you'll see less of a directed by Thomas Ridgewell and more of just written and produced by and then directed by uh, or the very least co-directed by someone else because I think someone else would do a better job than me. Are you still here? I told you to put the money on the table and get out. Get out now, or I'll be forced to incinerate you. I don't want to, and the visual effects department doesn't want to either. So, uh, despite my slight crisis of confidence at the end there, the new sketch is out, and it would mean a lot to me if you watched it, it would mean even more to me if you shared it, uh, but also check out Lonely Robots in Space, and of course Surfshark, 84% off, 4 months extra for free, with code DARKSQUIDGE when you're clicking the link in the description. That was 2020! That's, that's all the, the videos I'm making this year, hope you enjoyed what we did manage to squeeze out of this utter hell year. And I will see you for 2021, when things will magically immediately go back to normal and everything will be fine. Right? Right? Tom Scott out! <laughs>